I certainly laugh at you if you were going to do that. What is going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about four things you can do to train for the endurance course on the CPC. It's not just give on this YouTube channel though, I need something from you, okay? Drop a like and subscribe before we get into the video and let's go. You've charmed me. Yeah. Okay, first of all, we need to talk about what is the endurance course, okay? So it's two miles of undulating terrain and tunnels and hills, etc., followed by a four mile run back to camp. You'll do the endurance course as part of your commando test, okay, at the end of your journey. However, you will also do it on the CPC and you'll get thrashed around the endurance course a little bit to test your mindset, test your determination levels, and then you'll go back and do your four mile run back to camp. So the reason we need to train for this specifically then is it's the number one thing after the RMFA or after the fitness tests that you're going to fall foul of, that you're going to fail. So if we can train for it and we can mitigate any of that, then that's brilliant. And also some of the movements that we're going to be looking at and going to be doing on the actual endurance course itself aren't very common movements to be seen in a gym environment. Okay, So we're going to look at how we can emulate those movements in a gym and better prepare our bodies for what's to come. Okay, so number one then, first movement we're going to look at is drags. So dragging people, whether it be someone's hooked around the back of me and I'm dragging them forward, I've got my arms underneath them or I'm dragging them backwards, anything like that, okay, it's going to be a drag. So you're dragging someone heavy across undulating ter terrain. The way we're going to train for that is a sled drag. Okay, we can see straight away the carryover and the, and the transition between these two movements. Obviously, we're moving the same in terms of a little tiny choppy footsteps, we're also thinking about the same muscle recruitment, so quads, namely, okay, the quads are getting loaded nice and heavily, and we're getting the heart rate up and getting used to not being able to breathe with something on our chest, or getting used to moving while we're negotiating something heavy. Okay, the other thing we can look at doing, okay, is trying to train for the worst case scenario. So the worst case scenario on CPC, you're 75 kilos like me, and you get paired with someone who's 110 kilos. Oh, for fuck's sake. David? That's not ideal. However, we can train for that in a gym environment and we can just put 140 kilos on the sled itself and make sure that whoever we get paired with, it's going to be no problem, okay? We can just crack on anyway because we've trained properly for that eventuality. If we load 140 kilos on the sled and we do things like 100 foot at a time, 200 foot at a time, okay? Really getting used to moving for long periods of time across that turf, then when we go to the CPC, the body's gonna be nice and used to it, and it's gonna feel what we've felt in the gym, just now in a different environment, and you're gonna be more than capable of getting through that evolution. Something that people fall foul of quite a lot, quite often, because they're not conditioned to these kinds of movements. That's what we're gonna look at today. Okay, next up then is carries. Any kind of carry, okay? Fireman's carry, baby carry, whatever it may be, we're gonna to need to be proficient in carrying heavy objects across distance. So there are two movements I'm gonna give you to train for this movement or for this type of thrashing they're gonna put you through. So the number one is the front rack kettlebell carry. So we're gonna get two kettlebells, nice and heavy, and we're gonna sit them on our wrists, nice and far in front of us. We're gonna make sure we're front loaded. We're then gonna walk, okay, carry them however you want. This is gonna put loads of stress on the anterior core, so front of your body, front core, and it's gonna put loads of stress on your back. The thing we wanna make sure is that we've got a straight line from head to toe, making sure we're not bowing at the hip at all to create that arch and create that shelf for the weight to sit on. Obviously, we're gonna mitigate the benefits doing that. When we look at carrying the kettlebells, what we're doing as well is getting used to carrying something with something on our chest, stopping our lungs expanding. We're gonna get used to that sort of stimulus, which isn't something we're gonna come across doing front squats or doing back squats or doing just run running intervals. These things are gonna to have to be trained specifically, so that's what we're looking at. How can we take what we're gonna see on bottom field or on an endurance course at CPC, pull it into a gym environment and actually train for it and be ready for any eventuality? So the number one is the kettlebell carry. Number two is the Zercher carry, okay? The thing this has over the kettlebell carry is we can load it nice and heavy. So the Zercher carry, we're gonna get the barbell in the crook of our armpit, crook of our elbow, excuse me, and we're gonna carry that weight. Again, linking back to what we said about the sled pull, people are gonna be 80, 90, 100 kilos on CPC. Should you have to carry them in a baby carry format, it's gonna be pretty stinking if you haven't gotten used to it. So, loading a Zercher carry, 80, 90, 100 kilos, is gonna be massively advantageous. We're gonna have 
that stimulus to the body already, we're used to it, okay, we're strong in that position, we're nice and efficient in the way we can breathe, take shallow breaths to, to get across ground, we know how it feels, so we don't get a shock to the system when we've got an 80 kilo bloke in front of us and we're trying to move with him, okay? It's got really, really good carryover from Zercher carry to baby carry. Okay, third one then, third movement is the duck walk, okay? This is something, to be fair, that you could do in your gym. However, if you're someone who trains in a pure gym or a commercial gym, going around and doing duck walks is probably gonna look a bit stupid. I certainly laugh at you if you were going to do that. So how can we make it a bit more of an acceptable gym movement? However, how can it still have carryover? into what we needed to do. So the walking lunge is where I would go with this. So making sure, okay, we're hitting the same sort of things that the duck walk's gonna hit. So we look at the duck walk, we think legs are already under, always under tension. We're moving forwards and we're body weight essentially, okay, we can do loads of reps. The body weight walking lunge is the same thing. So the legs are always under tension, we're moving across ground and the body weight is the stimulus so we can do loads of reps. Same thing, okay, the advantage almost with the lunge is it's gonna hit the same muscles, yes. However, we can load it much, much heavier. So we can go really heavy and just go low reps or we can go medium weight, okay, like 30, 20 kilos and go for loads of loads of distance and put it into a circuit format. So this is really good because it's something that's gonna challenge the same muscles. So quads, namely the quads and the glutes, okay, with the duck walk, same thing with the lunge, but also we can overload it. So we're gonna to come to do the duck walk and be really, really good at doing it because we'll be used to loading the legs over that distance. Okay, then fourth and final point up for this then is the hill sprint. Hill sprint, obviously, it's not a specific movement you do. However, it is something you're gonna be doing really, really frequently on the CPC, so it's good to be used to it. Clearly, we can throw hill sprints into our training, but we're looking at how we can strengthen ourselves in the gym to take over into that CPC environment or to help our hill sprints in the rest of our training. So, where I've gone with this is the sled push. So, we have the sled pull, we're now going into sled push, okay? So making sure that we are loading it really heavy at, at certain points in our training and loading it really light in a different point in the week. The reason being we need both of these stimuluses. It's completely different. If you've ever done sled pushes, you'll know. If it's really, really heavy, you're marching it almost, it's really slow, we're planting through the feet and driving forward. If you're doing a light sled push, we can sprint with that sled, get all that lactic build up a bit more like a like a hill sprint. Lactate build up in the legs and heart and lungs are firing, okay? The same thing as a hill sprint. Also, if you look side on for a sled push and we look side on for a hill sprint, the way the feet and the knees are in terms of the position and therefore the muscles that are associated with being recruited there are the same essentially, they're very similar. So making sure we're doing loads of, hill, loads of sled pushes to carry over when we do hill sprints. Again, we can put these into circuits so we don't have to do them in isolation. So we can get really fatigued on a, on a bike or on a rower, then we can come and do a sled push sprint and then we can go back to it. That's gonna really, really be good at emulating what we're gonna feel on CPC and the endurance course because they're gonna have you running for a little bit. You might stop, then you might do a load of hill sprints, then you might stop, okay? So making sure we're bringing that intensity into the gym so we've felt it and we know how, know how, it's, know how it's going. Okay, the final bit I'll touch on for the CPC endurance course then is the four mile run back to camp. This is actually the thing that almost caught me out Okay, I'd smashed the endurance course, I was good to go. However, wasn't aware that we had to run four miles back to camp. So I was already at like 99% effort, 99% exertion, and I had to go again. So essentially, had to just draw on a little bit of inner willpower to get me through. However, we wanna try and mitigate a little bit of that and make sure we can get through it a little bit easier. So the four mile run back to camp clearly is something we're doing after a massive backlog of work. So the number one thing is, is a big aerobic base. So we're linking into the namesake of the course, okay, the endurance course. We're going to need a lot of endurance. And no fucking shit. So the way we build that is 60 to 90 minutes zone two, making sure we're building that aerobic base, making sure we've got a nice set of cardiovascular fitness so that's gonna carry us through both the endurance course itself and then when we get a little bit of turnaround time, a little bit of rest, we can, we can recover and still hit that four mile run back. If you're someone who can easily do a 12 mile run, you know, at eight minute miles in zone two, then you're someone who's probably gonna find that four mile run a little bit easier than the person who is struggling to hit five miles, okay? 
it's just how things work. So getting a big base of endurance and a nice aerobic base is number one. Number two, and I think people miss this out a fair bit in their military training, is compromised running. So what do I mean by that? Pretty self-explanatory in terms of we're gonna be running in a compromised state. So anytime you're running where your legs or your heart and lungs are on fire, that's when you're training your compromised running. People don't really do this, they tend to just do leg training or just do running, okay, separate. It's very, very different. So when we get into the CPC and we're doing things like air squats, like lunges, like duck walks, like drags, that kind of thing, we're obviously getting load through the legs, we're getting load through the heart and lungs, we're getting stimulus through the mid back and the core. We're then having to perform on a run. That's compromised, okay, that's compromised running. So what I want you to do is go in the gym and again, emulate some of this. So what we're gonna do is a, a running workout into a heavy sled push, into another run, into a heavy sled push. Okay, that heavy sled push is gonna constitute what we're gonna be doing on CPC, so the drags or whatever it is. We're then gonna run in that compromised state. It's gonna get you used to recovering on that initial part of the run. So the run back to camp on CPC isn't tremendously fast. It's about nine, eight minute miles. Okay, it's not fast. Ooh, you're hard showing off. So if you're someone who can recover at eight minute miles, then you're someone who's gonna be brilliant at that initial event. So training, so for example, if you do a 100 foot sled push into a kilometre run, if you can make sure you start that kilometre run almost recovering at a certain pace, then you're training your body to recover while it's moving. So again, when you take that into an endurance course scenario, we're gonna finish the endurance course, might have a little turnaround time, Again, we're gonna be fucked pretty much. We're gonna be finished physically. So we're gonna to need to be able to set off on that run and still recover and still gain back energy while we're running. If we can do that, we're gonna set ourselves up for success. That's the video then guys. So we had four movements that you're gonna see on your endurance course into four movements you can do in the gym to train for those. If you enjoyed that, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. And if you are looking to join the military, then the top link in the description will be my military preparation seminar day, which is at the end of this month. So make sure you get on that, get yourself booked on. There's a last few spaces still going. And the link underneath that will be my military athlete academy, which is something you can use if you're someone who wants to train for the military but doesn't really know how to. If you found this interesting and, and you're not doing a lot of these movements that I've outlined there, then I would encourage you to have a look at that because we, d we do them on a weekly basis in my academy, okay? So make sure you check those links out. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>